Hello, good morning. Uh, today is Saturday. Uh, today is the Saturday, December 4th. Okay. I know you are working very hard for the final exam and uh, I am also working hard. So I'm prepared for this, uh, prepare this video to help you review uh, the final exams materials. So I'm just going to give you some examples, right? For the questions, uh, what, what kind of questions um, you know, the format, right, uh, in the final exam. Uh, so these questions are not exhaust exhaustive, right? So basically, um, it's just some examples, right? So, okay, so let's take a look at the first question. The multiple choice question, um, number one, okay, number one, a responsibility center that incurs cost and expenses and generate revenue is classified as a. So if a responsibility center uh, res is responsible for both costs and the revenue, okay, uh, we are saying that this is a profit center. Okay, this is a profit center. Okay, so that's the first question, a uh, second one. The most useful measure for evaluating a manager's performance in controlling revenues and the costs in a profit center is, there are some options here, okay? Contribution margin, contribution net income, contribution gross profit, and controllable margin, okay? So the answer is D, the answer is D. Uh, why? If you remember that when we are talking about the uh, responsibility centers, right? So the whole idea is uh, in order for the uh, <clears throat> performance management, management useful, uh, this cost and expenses and this revenues have to be controlled, has to be able, the manager have to have to be able to control these costs or revenues, right? So therefore you got, you're gonna get a controllable margin. That is the one uh, would be really useful. So if any expenses or cost or revenue that are beyond the control of the managers, okay? So it's unfair to, uh, to use that to evaluate against their performance, right? So therefore we are talking about the controllable. So the um, revenue uh, expenses that are controlled by the managers. And the difference of that is a controllable metric. So the manager should be held responsible, res responsible for that, okay? So that's number two. Uh, number three, a uh, penny corporation desires to earn target net income of 25,000. If the selling price per unit is $50, unit variable cost is $30, and total fixed cost are 700,000. The number of units that the company must to sell to earn its target income, target net income is, right? So this one, for this one, uh, we know the formula, right? This is something uh, you have seen this one in well of the midterm exam. So uh, the formula would be your total fixed, fixed costs plus targeted net income. And we are, asking the number of units, the number of units, okay? So they are asking about the number of units. So we're gonna divide it by contribution margin per unit. Okay, so that's the formula. Um, I believe that you have already known this from the previous. Um, so here, total cost is 700,000 and the uh, expected net income is 25,000 and the contribution margin contribution margin per unit. So that would be uh, 50, that's the selling price minus 30, right? So if you do this calculation, so 725 divided, divided by 20, so that's gonna be 36. 36, 250, okay? So the answer is B, 
The answer is the second, okay? B, 36 to 50. So if you calculate uh, 725,000 divided by 20, so you should get 36,250. Okay, so that's this question. Okay, so number four, Shelter Corporation uses a process cost accounting system given the following information. Uh, okay, so process cost accounting we didn't cover. So this question will pass, okay? This question will pass because we we talked about, uh, we didn't talk, we talked about job order costing, right? We spent a lot of time on that. For process costing, we skipped. So we probably will learn this in the uh, cost accounting uh, course. Okay, so we'll pass this one for now. Next one, um, this company applies overhead on the basis of machine hours. Given the following data, calculate overhead applied and under an over application of overhead for the period. Okay, so estimated annual overhead cost, that's the estimation is 450,000. The actual annual overhead cost, 435,000. The estimated machine hours, 90,000. The actual machine hours is 88,000. Okay, 88,000. So, uh, here we want to know, we want to know the overhead applied. Okay, so how much is the overhead applied? Overhead applied. So you are going to figure out the, first you are going to figure out the uh, predetermined overhead rate. Okay, so first step one, you are going to uh, figure it out um, figure out the predetermined uh, overhead rate. That's the first step. So how to do this, right? You use estimated numbers, right? Estimated uh, annual overhead cost divided by estimated machine hours. So you use two estimate numbers. So here we have 450,000 divided by uh, 90,000 hours. So you worked out to be $5 per machine hour, right? So how much you applied? Step two is figured out how much you applied. So uh, overhead, overhead applied equals actual machine hour, times predetermined overhead rate. So that will be 88K, that's the actual machine hour times five equals 440,000. Okay, so that's the step two, right? Okay, so now what step three, step three, so the over, over, under applied, all over applied. So this is diff, this is easy, right? So the, the difference is uh, you use the actual overhead cost minus overhead applied. So that equals, so the actual is 435,000 and you applied 440,000. So the difference is a 5,000 difference, okay? So you actually over applied 5,000, right? You over applied 5,000. Uh, the amount that you applied is 440. The actual is 435. Uh, sorry, David, you guys, can you, can you guys be, uh, keep it down, please? Okay, so uh, so the the amount you the amount of overhead you applied is more than the actual overhead cost, okay, by five k. 
So you over applied 5K. Okay, so you, for then which answer is this? So the answer is A. Hey, Daniel, can you please keep it down? Please come close this door for me, please. Okay, so the answer is A, right? This is how, how much is applied, 440,000. And it's actually $5,000 over applied, okay? So that's this question. Uh, question six, question six. The following data has been collected for use in analyzing the behavior of maintenance costs of rider corporation. So you have the month, January to July, you know the maintenance costs and the machine hours for each month. So here you are using the high-low method to separate the maintenance cost into their variable and the fixed cost component. And these components are, okay? So this is a mixed cost, right? You, you can use high-low method, okay? But you have to be careful. When you talk about high-low, right? Are you referring to the activity index or you are referring to the cost dollar amount, right? So the high-low here, it's referring to the activity activity uh, index. So what is the activity index? In this case, that's the machine hours. So you're gonna find which month has the highest, okay, the highest machine hours. So we can see, we go through all these numbers, we can see here, May, okay. In May, we have, this is the high, right? This is the high. And now we're gonna find the low, okay? And then we go through the machine hours. Which one is low? 10,000 here, February. So this is low. So now let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. The, uh, let's figure out the, uh, variable cost and the intercept, right? The variable cost and the intercept. So here we want to figure out what is the variable cost, right? So what is the slope, okay? So you use the difference in costs divided by difference in activity level, activity level. So the difference in cost from high 300K minus low 180K divided by 25K uh, minus 10K, okay? So this gives me 120K divided by 15K. So that give me eight, right? Yeah, that's eight, okay? So it's eight dollar, per machine hour, okay? That's what I got. So this is kind of like my variable component, okay? My, so by, by now I should know $8 per hour, it's already, I already know the answer, right? The answer is D. The other options have different numbers. So even, I don't even have to calculate what's the fixed cost, okay? I know, I know for now it's already D, but you know, we stick, Let's just calculate the fixed cost, okay? So let's pick, we can pick any of the months. Let's use, let's use the high, okay? High, the, the high months, okay? Which is the May, okay? So the cost is 300,000 K. That equals variable cost, eight times the units, 25 K and plus fixed cost. So to solve fixed cost, so I'm going to get 300K minus uh, eight times 25K, that's gonna be, uh, how much is that? 400, what is that? 
uh, 8 times 25K, 200, 200K. So 300K minus 200K, that's 100K, right? So you can see, so it's gonna be the answer D, eight hours, eight hour, eight dollars per hour plus 100 um, fixed cost, right? So that's the question for, for six, question for six. Uh, question seven, question seven. Given the following information for Sateco company, calculate the company's ROI. So we know the sales, 1.25 million, controllable margin, 200,000, average operating assets. So that is 800,000, okay? So what is the ROI, okay? So ROI, So that equals return on investment, right? Okay, so then you think about the return on investment, you are thinking about uh, maybe this is a, a, a actually a, a controllable margin, right? Uh, so that's how much money you make divided by uh, total eyesight, right? Total eyesight. Okay, so here, here, uh, let me see. Uh, we have controllable margin is 200,000. And the average operating asset, that's 800,000. So two divided by eight, this is 25%. Okay, so the answer is D, 25%. Okay, so use the margin divided by the eyesight. Okay, so 200 divided by 800. So that's a quarter, 25%. Okay, let's move on. Uh, number eight, given the following data for Renee's company, calculate A, total manufacturing cost, and B, cost of goods manufactured, okay? So I remember I have a video for this, right? I made an animation for this to have a video on this. So total manufacturing cost, A. Eh? So direct material used, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, right? So if you add them together, that would be your manufacturing cost, right? So I have 120, 100, 150 together it's a 370. Okay, 370. So it's either B or C, 370. And then uh, the cost of goods manufactured. Okay, so in this way, if you remember, we have to use a T account, right? If I remember clearly, uh, we have to use a T account. So cost of goods manufactured, we are going to use working in process. Uh, T account. So we have to use here, we use work in process uh, inventory account to figure out the cost of goods manufactured. Okay, so the uh, beginning work in process, so that is 20,000. Okay, so then the manufacturing overhead cost, sorry, the manufacturing cost, we know 370,000. Okay, so that's these three numbers. Uh, I would use the green color, 120, 100, and 150. This, the, the, the sum of these three numbers, these three numbers is 370,000. That is my uh, manufacturing cost. So your working in process is opening is 20,000 plus 370,000, okay? And then, then you have cost manufacturer. That would be transferred to the finished goods, right? For those goods manufactured, they will be transferred from work in process to finished goods. So you have to minus uh, cost 
of goods manufactured. So that equals your ending inventory, the ending working in progress inventory, which is 10,000. So when you solve this one, if you solve this one, you will know that the cost of goods manufactured should equal to 380,000, okay? So the answer is 370 and 380. So the answer is C, the answer is C. Okay, so that's number eight. Okay, let's take a look at number nine. Number nine, the product, production cost report shows both quantities and the costs. Costs are reported in three sections. Okay, uh, one, costs accounts for, two, unit costs, C, uh, three, uh, costs to be accounted, okay? The sections are listed in the following order, okay? So which one, uh, which are the, how this section is presented? Production cost report, okay? Um, this question, the answer is D. The answer is D, uh, so it's unit cost will be uh, presented first, and then cost to be accounted for. Okay, it's A cost accounts for. I don't remember, I, I talked about this. I think we didn't have time to talk about this production cost report. So let's just leave this, let's just leave this. Okay, uh, the number 10, the starting point of a master budget is the preparation of, that should be straightforward, right? The preparation of the sales budget, right? Because you need to have a budget for the number of the sales, right? So that's the first one, sales budget. Number 11, uh, the most useful measure for evaluating the performance of the manager of an investment center. So we are talking about investment center, okay? So I have to make sure you, you read the question carefully. We are talking about the investment center. So which one is the useful measure? Um, contribution margin, controllable margin, return on investment, internal rate of return. So the answer is C, return on investment, right? For investment center, return on investment is a useful measure. Uh, which of the following capital project method does not use the time value of money concept? Okay. So internal rate of internal rate of return, net present value. Okay. Um, so this this two for sure. These two are the these two are the finance uh, terms, right? You're gonna learn this in the finance. This is related to the time value, not the present value, internal return, and the profitability index. Okay, this is also um, this is also use the time value. So the only one uh, didn't use the time value method is a annual rate of return. Okay, um, annual rate of return. 13, 13, uh, what are joint products? A, multiple end products produced from a single raw materials in a common process. B, multiple products that are combined to produce a single end product. C, multiple end products are substitute for each other. D, multiple uses for a product produced from a single raw materials. So the answer is A. So it's not only from a single raw materials, but it's from a common process, okay? It's from a common process. Okay, so that's this one. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, Thought uh, company estimates its sales at 80,000 units in the first quarter 
and that sales will be increased by 8,000 units each quarter over the year. They have and desire a 25% ending inventory of finished goods. Each unit sells for $25. 40% of the sales are for cash. 70% uh, of the customer credit the customers pay within the quarter. The remainder is received in the, in the quarter following the sale. Okay, so now let's take a look at the question 14. Cash collections for the third quarter are budgeted. Okay. So we are saying, okay, each unit sell for $25, 40% 40 of the sales for cash, okay? And 70% of the credit customer are paid within the quarter, okay? Okay, so you just have to read the question very carefully. Okay, so first we know sales, okay? Q1, uh, that's 80,000, that's 80,000 units, right? And the sales will increase by 8,000 units each quarter over the year, see? The sales will increase by 8,000 each quarter over the year. So for the next one, Q2, so my Q2 should be 88. Okay, my Q3 should be uh, 96K and my Q4 should be uh, plus eight, 104K, okay? So that's my sales, right? Okay, so now they are asking about the third quarter, okay? They're asking about the third quarter. Okay, so third quarter, I want to see how much cash I can collect it, right? Cash, cash collected during third quarter. So this one has a, a, a couple of um, components, right? And the simple one would be, the first one would be a cash uh, from a third quarter sales. So we know that um, each unit was sold for 25 and 40% of the sales are for cash, okay? So for third quarter, whatever the third quarter sales, 40% of that are in cash. So now I know the unit is 96K and each unit is sold for $25 and the 40% 40, 40 of this are cash. So this tells me 25, 40, so that should be 10, so 690K. So this is my component one, okay? And then my component two is, okay, uh, I will collect it cash from second quarter's credit sale, okay? And this is, so 70%, credit sales pay within the quarter and the remainder is the quarter following, right? So this is very important information. So for the credit sales, um, okay, 70% of that, sorry, for the credit customers, 70% will be sold for the sale. Okay, so let's do, uh, the remainder is received in the quarter following, right? So let's do this. So for quarter two, second quarter sales, that's the 88K times uh, $25, that's each one. And okay, this one will be uh, credit sales, 60%, right? If that's the credit sales, okay? And then for 70% of this is collected in the months, right? And 30% is collected the next month. So times 30%, okay? So this one gives me, how much is that? So I have to use a calculator, okay? Just give me a second. Okay, this calculation 
is not that straightforward. So 25. Okay, 396k, okay. And then I have a third component. I have a third component. So that'll be cash from third quarter credit sales. So third quarter is 96k. Each one is units, $25 sales and uh, Sixty percent of these are credit sales, and I'm able to collect seventy percent within that month. Okay, so this one. Okay, twenty-five times. Okay, a thousand eight k. So the total cash collected. So that would be the sum of this, right? The sum of the three. So plus 396 plus 960. So what I got is, hopefully I'm correct, 236,000, 2.364 million dollars. So the answer is C. Okay, so the answer is C. So just to quickly sum up, the cash collected. So the, how much cash you collected from the uh, third quarter sales, okay? So that's the first part. Second part is how much cash you collected from credit sales. You can collect it from either the current months or the previous months, right? For the current months, you collected um, 70%. For the previous months, you collected 30%, okay? Well, number 15, production in units for the third quarter should be budgeted at. So now we are talking about production units, okay? For the third quarter, okay? Again, for the third quarter. So let's see uh, units. Okay, so here is important information. They have and the desire are 20% of inventory finished goods. Okay, 20% uh, Ending inventory of finished goods. Uh, what does this mean? 20% of ending inventory, they have and desire a 25% ending inventory of finished goods. Okay. So here we are talking about a, a quarter, third of quarter, right? So this is my sales number, right? That's my sales number. So I want to know what's the uh, target ending inventory, ending inventory, ending inventory. So for Q1, 25%, so that'll be 20K, right? For Q2, that'll be 22K. Okay, for two, two three, uh, a quarter, that would be 24K. For Q4, 25 of this would be divided by four, 26K. Yeah. So that's my ending inventory, okay? That's my ending inventory. So for third quarter, the production. So my for the third quarter, my beginning, this is my third quarter, my beginning inventory. So that is 22K plus production. Okay, plus production. Uh, minus sales units sold. That equals my ending inventory. So that would be 24K. Okay, so I just need to solve this, right? I just need to solve this one. 
So I know there are the units sold. So that's 96K for Q3. So when I solve this, the production is ninety eight K. So the answer is A. The answer is A. The answer is A. Okay, so you can see that I know the sales number. For example, Q1 sales number is 80K and the desired ending inventory is 25% of that, which is a quarter, right? So a quarter of 80, that's 20, right? So following the same uh, logic, I figured out Q, uh, the, the ending inventory for Q2, Q3, and Q4. It's just a, a quarter of the sales for the quarter. Uh, and then my opening is for Q3. We are trying to solve Q3. The opening is the ending of Q2, 20, 22K, and uh, plus production minus sales. Sales is 96K. That should be my ending inventory, 24K. So I solved production should be tw uh, 98K, okay? Okay, so question 16, Rebel company incurs the following cost in producing 25,000 units of product, direct materials, direct labor, variable fixed overhead, and outside the supply year has offered to supply the 25,000 units at $11 each. All of Rebel's related variable costs uh, but only 250,000 of the fixed cost would be eliminated if the offer is accepted. So the acceptance is going to result in a what, right? So remember, this is a accept or reject scenario. Accept or reject. And we are going to use incremental uh, analysis, right? Incremental analysis, okay? So you only consider you only consider relevant costs, right? Relevant costs. Okay, so if you accept versus reject, right? If you accept, you do not have to make it by yourself, right? So the manufacturing cost is zero. If you, if you reject it, you have to uh, make it yourself, right? You have to make it yourself. So you make it how much that's gonna cost you. So that's gonna cost you, uh, you're gonna add all these numbers, right? This is the cost, my product cost for producing 25,000 units. So if I add this up, seven, this one, this is the seven, this one is three. So 1,025,000. 2, so that's 1,025,000. 2, okay, so if I add these four numbers together, I have a million dollar 25,000. Yeah. Okay, and uh, but but if you accept, okay, uh, you have to pay, right? You have to pay. Oops. So you have to pay. How much do you pay? You pay $15, uh, 25. You're going to purchase 25,000 units, each at 15. So this gives me what this gives me. So 25 times 15, 25 times 15, 375,000, okay. Okay, and you also, you also save here, um, you only have, 250,000 fixed cost would be eliminated, right? 
So if you accept, if you accept this, you are going to, okay, eliminate, eliminate uh, fixed cost of 250. So here, uh, sorry, I'm going to back up here. I'm going to reduce, I'm going to only consider the fixed cost, right? So the fixed cost here, I have to minus, let's see what it would be, five. So if I add direct material, direct labor and variable overhead, if I add these three, I'm gonna use the green color. So if I add this three number, so that's gonna give me five to 5,000. Okay, so here is zero. And we, we have to look at the fixed cost on its own, right? And the fixed cost, if you accept it, so 250,000 of fixed, fixed cost will be reduced. That means if you accept it, the fixed cost would be 2,500K. If you are uh, rejected, you make your own, that's gonna be 500K, okay? I think that's it. So let's take a look at the total. So for this one, I have six to five K total, six to five K. And for this one, I have 10 to five K. And the difference, 400 K, okay. So if you accept it, the cost is 625K. If you don't accept it, you reject it, the cost is 1,025K, okay? So when you accept it, you are going to save $400,000. So the answer is 16, the answer is C, okay? So, if you accept the offer, your cost is 400,000 lower than you reject it, right? So they're, so they're the savings of 400,000. So the answer is C. Okay, Finnish number 17, Finnish company has a production process where two products result from a joint processing procedure. Both can be sold immediately or processed further. Given the following additional uh, per unit information, determine which of the products should be processed further. Okay, so this is another question. So this is related to uh, sell. This is also a decision to make, right? Uh, this is related to sell or process further. Okay. Uh, so A, uh, two products, A and B. This is a joint processing procedure. Uh, so additional cost is 175. Uh, the new selling price is this. Which one should be processed further? A, only product A, B, only product B, C, both, D, neither. Okay, let's take a look at product A. Okay. If further process, what's my benefit? Benefit is the new selling price minus the old selling price. So if you process further, you can sell it for $180 more, that's your benefit per unit. What's the cost? 175. So your benefit is more than, the benefit is more than the cost. So process further. So similar idea, similar idea, product B. If, further process, what's the benefit? The benefit is you can sell it for better price. 
from 150 to 190. So that's the $40 more per unit. And what's the cost? $30 per unit. The benefit is more than the cost process further. So the answer is C, we're gonna do both. Okay, we're gonna do both. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, question 18. A flexible budget, okay, is also called a static budget. This is wrong, right? Because these two are the opposite, right? Flexible is not, a, is not a static. Can be considered as a series of related uh, static budget. Can be prepared for sales or production budget, but not for an uh, operating expenses budget. Typically, use an activity index different from that used in developing the predetermined overhead. Okay, so which question is correct? So A is wrong, okay. Uh, D, typically use an activity index different from the used in developing the predetermined overhead bit. So not different, right? They typically use the same activity index, right? If you're, you are developing the predetermined overhead rate, right, for your overhead cost application, let's say you use machine hours, right, as the activity index. So when you develop a flexible project, you, you're gonna stay with the same uh, activity index, right? You're gonna use machine hours instead of changing it to be a labor hour, right? Uh, for operating expenses project, um, right, depending on the level of the uh, um, activity index, right? For example, operating expenses would be including selling price, right? The selling price really tied into the level of the, the level of the activity, right? So, um, so, that, so C is not right. So the answer is B, the, the second, okay? So it can be considered as a series of related static project. Uh, because these activity levels are in, in uh, maybe even, even uh, increments, right? You can consider that as a series of static project, right? At different activity level. Okay, so number 19, an appropriate cost driver for an assembling cost pool is the number of, so we are talking about assembling cost. Right. Assembling cost, the workers are assembled on the uh, things. What's the assembling cost pool? The cost driver. So that's going to be number, number, which one? An assembling cost pool is the number of A, purchase orders. This is for the purchasing department, right? Setups, this is for the machines, right? For the machine cost. Uh, direct labor hours. So, and the parts. So assembling cost. So the more parts you used, that means your assembling cost would be higher, right? Uh, the direct labor, direct, direct laborers, that would also could be Assemble cost pool. Okay, so parts. So I guess the a more appropriate cost driver that would be the parts. So num number C, because um, this assembly not necessarily to be uh, be done by human being. It could be done by machines, right? So for the assembly line, right, um, the parts would be a, a driven, right? The more parts you used, the assembly cost is higher, right? But if you say direct labor hours, what about this assembly line is operated by, by robots, right? By, by machines. So if there's no answer C, I would pick answer D. But I think if you have C and D, C is the most appropriate one. Uh, 20, which of following is not one of the criteria and which responsibility accounting can be used at every level of management? 
not, right? Here's a not. Uh, cost and revenue accumulated report that involve manager who does not have the authority to make decisions, right? Uh, so the question, this is very obvious, right? A is wrong. This is very obvious. We, we are trying to get everyone involved, right? Especially the people, they have the uh, decision making, right? They have the frontline information. So we want, um, we want to make sure that, um, you know, we are re receiving inputs from that. Body data can be developed for evaluating effectiveness. Yeah, and the cost and revenue can be directly associated with the specific level of them. Yeah, the cost and revenue are controllable. Yeah, so B, C, D are correct. So the one is not correct, it's A. Okay, 21, uh, under the time and the material pricing approach, the charges uh, for any particular job including each of falling except. Uh, so this one, the answer is D, overhead charge. We talked about under the time and the material pricing approach. Okay. So the charges for any particular job including each of the following, except we, we talked about the labor, we talked about the material, right? We also talked about the, the material loading. If you remember on the slides, right? Uh, so this will be the material handling cost, right? So, but we didn't talk anything about overhead charge, right? We didn't talk about the overhead charge. Um, this overhead charge, um, so the idea is captured by the material loading charge, right? Um, it's not called overhead charge, right? It's a material loading charge. So why don't you go back to the slides? You're gonna, you're gonna take a look, right? That's how we uh, use these terms. We don't use overhead charge term. So the answer is D, right? This is, uh, this is not what we talked about, okay? 22. The transfer pricing approach uh, that does not reflect the selling division's true profitability is okay. Cost-based approach, market-based approach, negotiate the price approach, time and the material pricing approach. So for this one, uh, I think we will skip. Right, we. For chapter nine, transfer pricing, we didn't talk into, we didn't dive into the depths about these topics. So we're going to pass this question. Uh, and then 23, under the uh, absorption cost approach, all of the following are included in the cost base, except absorption costing. All of the following are included in the cost base, except uh, direct materials, uh, fixed manufacturing overhead, uh, variable manufacturing overhead. Yeah, so the only thing is C, right? It's pretty obvious. This siding and the main cost, they are not product cost, right? They should not be included as part of the production cost, but the materials fixed and the variable overhead, this is all included uh, in the product cost and the absorption costing approach. For the variable cost uh, approach, you consider fixed manufacturing overhead as a period cost, right? That's the difference. Okay, so that's my uh, multiple choice questions I'm reviewing with you. Uh, I am going to make sure you watch this video. Uh, I guess if you don't watch it, you won't hear me to say this. Okay, so I'm going to stop